Welcome back. I'm Alfred Lamont Weber, and here we are on, already on part six of our v, visit to Venus. And today we're with a uh, Venus visitor. Yes, he's been to Venus and this Venus contactee and Venus author, Professor Raymond Keller. Welcome, Raymond. Thank you. Thank you, Weber. Yeah. Pleasure to be here. Thank, thank you very much. And I just wanted to say that Robert Potter was to have been with us, and he's just not able to make it uh, at this at this one. So Raymond will be continuing with our part six of visit to Venus. And so I'm just going to turn it over to you, Raymond. Uh, to continue it. Thank okay. you, Alfred. Well, um, in previous episodes, we looked at Valiant Thor and some of the connections and documents that I was sharing regarding the notes that he took, uh, his presence at uh, Howard Menger's farm in Highbridge, New Jersey, and uh, other encounters that he's had along the way with Dr. Frank Stranges, uh, members of NICUFO Inner Circle, National Investigations Commission on U UFOs from Van Nuys, California, um, the Royal Order of Melchizedek, and so forth. Well, today we're going to look at some of the connections explored in my current book, The Vast Venus Conspiracy, uh, with Commander Aura Rains. So let's take a look at Chapter 6 in The Vast Venus Conspiracy. Dominic Lucchesi meets the space girl. Okay, this is the cover of the new book. It's now out on uh, Amazon and there, there are a limited number of copies uh, available and um, while well, the supplies last. And uh, many amazing encounters between earthlings and Venusians to explore in this book. Now, Dominic Lucchesi uh, was born in 1925 in Jersey City, New Jersey, and he died in the same city in 1987. He was a famous contactee from, from the state of New Jersey and a technical consultant to Albert K. Bender's International Flying Saucer Bureau, the one that was shut down by the pressure from the mysterious men in black. The organization only existed from uh, 1952 to 1953, and following its, its closure, uh, Dominic Lucchesi, August C. Roberts, and others that were associated with Albert K. Bender began to work with Gray Barker uh, in publishing The Saucerian at the Saucerian Press in Clarksburg, West Virginia. Now, Dominic was an electronics and radio wizard, as well as one of the pioneer ufologists. Um, here you see him at his home in the early years as a scientific consultant uh, for the aforementioned UFO group. Dominic was alive as a teenager at the time of the famous Martian invasion of New Jersey, the Orson Welles radio broadcast on October 30th, 1938, Grover's Mill, New Jersey, and uh, frequently asked questions about the uh, so-called Martian invasion. Uh, he quoted this uh, statement. I think it's, it may have been from, uh, may have been originally said by uh, Arthur C. Clarke, the British science fiction author, but he said, Martians hate earthlings. They have invaded earth over and over since the 1890s, reference H.G. Wells' War of the Worlds, but are stopped each time despite their superior weapons and iron will. Why? Perhaps because they lack the very things they want so much from earth, warmth and humanity. So he realized that all the, all the planets of our solar system were inhabited 
they were either colonized uh, or home to indigenous life forms. Now on the slide that we're going to look at next, uh, this is Lady Venus, Space Commander, uh, drawn by Dominic Lucchesi, who is uh, an amateur artist, but he did the illustrations for Nexus magazine, uh, which uh, presaged the publication of Saucer News uh, by Gray Barker's Saucers and Unexplained Celestial Events Research Society. So this is the October 1954 cover. Uh, we see in the bottom, it's a, a cover by Dominic Lucchesi. Uh, he was very proud of his Italian and Sicilian heritage. Uh, this is Mount, uh, representative of Mount Etna, the volcano uh, in, in Sicily. And to the right is the, uh, is the goddess Venus, or, or really the extraterrestrial Lady Venus. And so we see the Venusian scout craft depicted here in the, uh, in the upper left. So Lucchesi was a frequent guest on uh, Long John Neville's radio program. That was the party called the Party Line. It was on uh, WOR in uh, New York City, 710 on the AM dial. And uh, it was broadcast over 25 states before being syndicated uh, in the late 1950s and early 1960s uh, to go nationwide on the mutual broadcasting uh, corporation. Uh, Lucchesi did not hesitate to discuss many UFO cases he had personally investigated, although he was somewhat reluctant to reveal his own experiences as he wasn't sure what information uh, he could safely confide to uh, the people of Earth without consulting to his extraterrestrial contact. This is myself and uh, uh, Michael LaRich of uh, the Cleveland Ufology Project, Cleveland UFO Society, and uh, Akron Goodyear UFO Group, uh, going out in September of 1969, driving out to New York City to hear Dominic Lucchesi do a presentation on his UFO contacts. I had a 1964 Pontiac GTO convertible that I was very, very proud of. Uh, this is me in the 1969 edition of the National Enquirer. This is from Gray Barker's collection. I worked uh, closely with, um, with Gray Barker and other ufologists at the time, publishing this magazine that called the Flying Saucer Report. Uh, that you see me holding some some pictures of here in the uh, in the, the center frame, and so as part of uh, part of my job as a, a UFO investigator, a, a teenage UFO investigator, I uh, um, wanted to interview as many prominent ufologists of the the age for exclusive articles in the Flying Saucer Report which I'm still very proud of uh, uh, even at now as I am a senior citizen. Uh, this is my friend, Michael LaRich, otherwise known as uh, North Coast Mike. He traveled, this is a, a photo from around that time. He traveled with me to investigate uh, uh, Dominic Lucchesi's case and to tape record uh, his message at the Flying Saucer at the Flying Saucer con Convention. Uh, Mike did one of the first paranormal uh, broadcasts uh, on WZAK radio in Cleveland, Ohio. It was normally an ethnic radio station, but he convinced the manager that, uh, that uh, a radio program dealing with paranormal topics like Long John Neville's would be very popular in the Cleveland area. And so it, uh, it was a regular program and he interviewed uh, people like um, uh, Earl J. Neff and uh, Larry Blasey and uh, uh, representatives of uh, 
UFO groups, Association for Research and Enlightenment. It was a terrific program. So he, he went along to do the recording of Dominic Lucchesi. Um, the following slide is uh, first generation ufologist Jim Mosley, so impressed with Jack and Irene Forster's close encounter in 1954 uh, with a landed saucer in New Jersey uh, near their home uh, that uh, he used Lucchesi's um, uh, sketch artist drawing of uh, the Forster case to illustrate the December 1954 issue of the Nexus magazine. So here we see, this is, um, this is uh, the, uh, the entity that um, later on um, Dominic Lucchesi would come to know as, um, as Commander Aura Rains. The same, the same uh, woman who appeared to uh, a Truman Betherum out in the uh, Mormon Mesa in Nevada on 11 different occasions and allowed him to fly in the spaceship to um, a moon base on the far side of the moon called Clarion. So exclusive, I have other exclusive information including original letters from Truman Betherum and documents from um, Aura Rains from, from that time that uh, I frequently bring with me to UFO events and uh, allow people to, uh, to, to look at them. Um, this is from my, uh, from my Venus files. This is one of Dominic Lucchesi's on the left. QSL cards, or one of his radio identification um, call letter cards. And you see it has an extraterrestrial theme with, uh, with ETs uh, on the moon. And then uh, to, the, uh, to the right at the, the top here, we have a Cytherium um, crystal activation device and a signal watch that Dominic Lucchesi used on many occasions to summon the beautiful space girl uh, or aura rain. So he's, um, he's demonstrating this uh, in his home. One of the fans of my books, uh, inspired by that uh, photograph, did a sketch here. On the left is um, Dolores Barrios the queen of Venus, the queen of outer space. And on the right is uh, uh, the moon base commander Aura Rains, uh, based on the cover of the December 1954 Nexus magazine. Now, it may be possible that, uh, that um, George Hunt Williamson, um, Dominic Lucchesi, uh, Richard Shaver were pioneers in uh, developing radio communications, standard radio communications with extraterrestrials. And it may have been the inspiration for uh, the opening broadcast of The Outer Limits in September 1963, titled The Galaxy Beam. Here an electromagnetic entity uh, from another galaxy is accidentally brought down to Earth um, th through the facilities which are being misused by um, the commercial radio stations manager of a small station in California. And uh, the, uh, he was researching uh, microwave background radiation in outer space. And uh, this entity was brought down in a beam uh, in, in a radio beam and actually broke through into our dimension. I don't know just how much that, that episode is based on reality, but uh, as I study all these different cases of radio contact on earth by ham operators or people using other electronic equipment uh, where, where ETs will use that to communicate with humans or to project uh, direct 
transmissions into their brain, which is called a tensor beam transmission. So this is explored uh, further in this chapter as well. This is uh, the planet Venus, a uh, beautiful photo from the Japanese Akatsuki probe, uh, greenish and blue tint to the clouds. Uh, Venus is the only planet in the solar system that actually resonates at two frequencies. And I put them down here for the convenience of, uh, of you, the viewers, um, if you would like to tune into them. 221.23 hertz and 409.1 hertz. Many people say that it's very relax relaxing to meditate um, to, the, to the Venus frequencies. And um, here uh, we'll click this and hope that you'll be able to, uh, to, to hear it. It's directly from YouTube, for, taken from NASA space probe transmissions that were uh, intercepted. Uh, Ray Raymond? Yes. Uh, I, I think what, what's going to happen is to hear that, you would have to uh, copy and paste that YouTube link into a separate browser window. Then uh, you would have to stop this share screen and with that browser open, uh, bring that other open browser into a share screen and then play that YouTube video. What we can do is complete this PowerPoint and then go back and do that at the end. Oh, okay. Yeah, let's try that. We'll try that at the end. Sorry it didn't go through. Yeah, I no, no. It's just a very technical thing with uh, this software. Oh, okay. It's a, it's a great sound. I like to listen to it as I'm, as I'm writing. It gives me inspiration. <clears throat> Well, this is another sketch by Dominic uh, Lucchesi of uh, Space Commander Aura Reigns. Um, he sketched his own version based on his personal encounter with her, as well as that provided by the California contactee Truman Betherum from Redondo Beach, uh, who is working out on the, the, the Mormon Mesa. The original sketch is located in the Gray Barker collection in Clarksburg, West Virginia, and it's reproduced in my books with permission, along with a lengthy account of the commander's activities on page 71 of my epic book, Cosmic Ray's Excellent Venus Adventure, which largely tells about my encounters with, um, with Dolores Barrios, the queen of Venus, including new photos there of myself with her, as well as other uh, photos and depictions of the queen never before seen before, uh, even on the internet. Uh, Raymond, could I, could I um, interrupt here? I was gonna wait till the end, but since you've brought up the two terms, Dolores Barrios and quote, the queen of uh, Venus uh, twice now in a short period of time, I wonder if you could go more in detail what those terms mean. Uh, queen of Venus, is that a literal term where she is like the queen bee? Because you've said that Venus is organized almost uh, in, in, it's like a, a beehive democracy. So is she a Venusian who was the actual monarch or a queen bee of Venus? And if so, why does she have a Latin, a Latin Spanish, uh, an Hispanic name like Dolores Barrios? Could you explain that? Okay. Uh, well, she was a, actually a Venusian, and her first incarnation into the Earth uh, was back in the 
um, in the days of, um, of the Mongol Empire. And uh, she's been incarnated uh, uh, into uh, earth bodies many times. But in, the, uh, in her incarnation beginning in the year uh, 1585, um, during the course of that incarnation, uh, she became uh, a translated being, an immortal. And, um, and uh, in 1946, ascended to, uh, uh, ascended to Venus, uh, where she went, underwent some training and came back to the earth um, to work on behalf of the Venusian hierarchy of light. And uh, her story, how she became how she became chosen as the Queen of Venus is in the very first book called Venus Rising, a Concise History of the Second Planet. So what was she the queen of Venus for a period while she was on Venus? Is that what it, what it was? Uh, yes, um, she in the, in the year uh, in the year 2013, uh, she was chosen to be the the Queen of Venus, and uh, she's still the reigning queen of, of Venus. Although she has she has a regent and counselors that uh, that help her with that task, and as well as very wise sages and and uh, ambassadors and representatives from the 601 uh, planets in the Confederation from 50 from uh, 50 one star systems. And is she based in Venus now? Uh, yes, she is. I see. Okay, well, thank you very much. You're, you're quite welcome. Uh, uh, Rob has uh, an actual message from her and there is a, it was also sent, uh, it's a Valentine's Day message from her. That's on rents.com. If you go to Raymond Keller under rents.com, you can play the Valentine's Day message from, from the Queen and actually hear, hear her voice. Now, uh, while, while Aura Reigns was on the earth, uh, she went by the name of uh, Evelyn Smith. She was a pioneer science fiction writer. Um, this is a uh, this is one of the books that she wrote called The Venus Trap. And here's a collection on the right of some of her, uh, of some of her science fiction stories. And uh, she was a frequent attendee of many flying saucer conventions and events throughout the, throughout the 1950s and into the early 1960s. Uh, she did her part to raise feminist consciousness um, during uh, during her last incarnation on Earth. Uh, she lived in Indianapolis, Indiana, uh, raised a uh, raised a family, and um, I have a picture of her uh, also posing as a model. Uh, for the cover of the magazine of fantasy and science fiction in October 1953, volume five, number four. It's interesting because it highlights a story, Letter to a Tiger, about a powerful female revolutionary from outer space. It's somewhat autobiographical, even. The heroine can pass through interdimensional gates. And in a few months after this magazine cover, was on the newsstands, uh, Captain Rains would uh, visit radio engineer Dominic Lucchesi at his New Jersey home. So here we see, this is, uh, this is the cover of the science fiction magazine. And that's Evelyn Smith right there. This is Dr. George Hunt Williamson. While he lived in, in Noblesville, Indiana for a while, he's originally from Prescott, Arizona, but uh, he became good friends with Evelyn Smith. 
uh, in Noblesville while working for the Soulcraft uh, magazine. And in his book, Other Tongues, Other Flesh, published in uh, 1951, there's an actual interview and investigation that he does with Evelyn Smith, uh, remarking on her unique, um, her, her unique qualities and psychic abilities. So they were actually friends and the documentation is right in uh, Williamson's own books. This is a photograph uh, taken by Dominic Lucchesi for the Nexus magazine of Dr. George Hunt Williamson and his appearance at the first flying saucer convention at, of George Van Tassel's Giant Rock on the 4th of April, 1954, the very first one. And uh, Van Tassel is descending from the DS. He was one of the first speakers. Uh, George Hunt Williamson is very famous for working closely with George Adamski, the contactee from Venus with, uh, with the Venusians, that is. And um, he was with Adamski along with a small party on the uh, 20th of November, 1952, about 10.2 miles outside of to the north and the east of Desert Center, California, uh, in the Colorado desert of, of Riverside County, California. And uh, he made these plaster casts of Orthon's footprints, of which he met, uh, subsequently put into um, a drawing. Uh, he sent these to his friend and associate in the Talonic Research Society, Peter Kaur, standing next to me here uh, in, his, in his Cleveland home, in a Cleveland suburb. And uh, he was also, uh, Peter Kaur is his alias, but he worked with Raymond Palmer at uh, uh, Amazing Stories, Flying Saucers Magazine, Mystic Magazine, and uh, many other many other publications, as well as uh, as well as with uh, uh, Otto Binder and other writers, um, ex in various esoteric publications such as uh, Space, that was a later publication by Raymond Palmer. And uh, this is the seventeenth of June, twenty eighteen. Uh, Peter Kaur told myself and Michael Rich. Uh, who drove out to see him that um, uh, and he showed us uh, uh, some photos inside the, the Livermore uh, laboratories and research that he was doing in the 1950s on atomic energy. So uh, he had to be very circumspect about what he was writing and publishing for Raymond Palmer's publications but he was on the board of directors of George Hunt Williamson's Talonic Research Society. And it was to Peter Kaur that Williamson sent the actual plaster, plaster of Paris footprints of Orthon, the Venusian pilot that was taken that day at Desert Center, California. So this is some this is actual correspondence from the Talonic Research Society. Um, this was his address back in the day in Shaker Heights, Ohio. And uh, he's writing to, uh, to Gray Barker of the Saucerian Press. And he explains here that the, that, uh, uh, well, one of the footprints had actually broken up in the mail. Uh, so he only had one good footprint to work with. And so, but the impressions weren't all that clear, but nevertheless, he was able to determine that it was from a very small foot from a, a size six slipper, uh, a, a, woman's, a woman's slipper, in fact. So this accounts for the fact that, um, that Orthon had these very slender, this very slender figure, figure and fingers and that that uh, that Orthon had a very uh, androgynous uh, somewhat to the feminine appear appearance 
although um, all Venusians were wearing uh, the same type of light tan uh, jumpsuit. This is John A. Keel, a pioneer, paranormal investigator. Uh, he was working out of New York City and published uh, published a newsletter called The uh, Anomaly and uh, wrote countless articles and numerous books about our mysterious universe and the, all the phenomena that it contains. He referred to uh, to it more as an omniverse or a super spectrum. This was the, uh, the mailing address of Keel's publication, Murray Hill Station in New York City. And um, this is from the, from the inside of the April 1974 jacket. Here's an interesting cartoon. The Earth people are evidently very similar to us here on Jupiter, except that they don't wear any clothes. This is from the Voyager probe, which I now understand is uh, has left the solar system and is on way, is en route, uh, having passed through the Oort cloud, and it's now on its way to the Alpha Proxima Centauri system. They turn the cameras back to take one last picture of the Earth and Venus that show up nicely in a in a uh, in a beautiful photograph. Sir John A. Keel was the first to become interested in the paranormal um, following the Richard Shaver case. Now, back in 1945, uh, Richard Shaver, a welder from, from uh, southwestern Pennsylvania, he uh, wrote a series of stories that he alleged were true and sent them to Raymond Palmer, the editor of Amazing Stories, telling about a vast underground civilization, an inner world right here under, under the earth, uh, connected by these huge vast caverns and inhabited by a race of beings called the Darrow. Uh, they were speaking through, to him through his, uh, through his welding equipment and transmitting specific knowledge directly into his brain via a tensor beam about uh, the, the workings of inner world civilizations and their long history, as well as their connections with the ancient continents of Lemuria and Atlantis, and even before that, with the hierarchy of light on the planet Venus. So you could check out some of these stories if you can if you can find if you can find someone, I'm sure that they've been they've been republished somewhere. But they're uh, very very intriguing and enlightening. Uh, Lady Columba, in her book, uh, Lady Columba, uh, Venus Revelations, which uh, which will be coming out on uh, Amazon in a couple of weeks. Uh, revealed the influence of Venus on the establishment of inner Earth civilizations. We had the the Darrow, uh, who were the the bad guys, and the Tarot, who were the good the good guys. And um, of course, there were star being alliances with inner Earth uh, people as well. And Lady Columba explores all these connections in her book, uh, Lady Columba Venus Revelations. This is my friend Rob Potter, and uh, you see him on the 20th of November of 1952 with the same commander, Aura Reigns, that was appearing back in the 1950s. Commander Reigns came to answer his questions. He had a series of, um, I think it was eight questions, and uh, she uh, appeared to him along with the bodyguard and uh, allowed herself to be filmed in answering these uh, these important questions. So, so who is that with with Robert in the in the photograph there? Um, that's uh, that's Commander Aura Reigns. Oh, I see. That's not 
that's not Lady Columba then. Uh, no, no, that's Aura uh, Rings. Oh, I see. I'll have, uh, I'll have uh, pictures of, of Lady Columba uh, when we get to, um, the, get to her book, um, Lady Columba Venus Revelations. Le Lady I see, I see. So in the, in the forthcoming chapters, we'll take a look at uh, uh, extensive UFO activities in the Garden State of New Jersey and uh, attempts to uh, uh, contact uh, earthlings, successful and otherwise, by uh, Venusians and other extraterrestrials. And uh, some of the uh, 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 plethora of uh, amazing encounters and in investigations, events and personages uh, populating the garden state. So we don't we don't want to miss that. Those are all in the vast Venus conspiracy. They're currently available on uh, on Amazon, although only a limited number of copies were were made. So if you if you want to get one of these books, um, you did, you would have to. Uh, um, uh, Google Amazon. Uh, Vast Venus conspiracy, and uh, and order one as as soon as you can. Okay, so on behalf of the Venusian hierarchy of light, many thanks for watching this presentation. Well, well, thank you very much, and and so. Uh, um, how would you characterize the, the nature of the mission of Venus to Earth? Uh, it seems like there's some very high level uh, uh, envoys. I mean, like uh, Aura Rains, Lady Columba, um, uh, yes. uh, Valiant Thor. Are these all sent? by a central coordination or is it just people that there's a uh, kind of a dimensional thing, interdimensional people by a spiritual script decide that they want to go? How, how is this done? Uh, uh, um, this, well, Alfred, Venus exists at multi-dimensional levels. So that's why it's expressed as a hierarchy of light, because the beings from the the, the higher dimension have the ultimate have the ultimate say so. So it goes, it filters down through a through a type of chain of command. Uh, as far as the Venusian uh, mission, I have a, I have a, an interesting quote here. Uh, this is this is from. Um, this is from uh, Gloria Lee. She was uh, in contact with beings from uh, uh, throughout the solar system and was an, uh, and was uh, an incarnated Venusian here on the here on the Earth plane. She lived from uh, on the Earth plane from uh, uh, the twenty uh, second of March, nineteen twenty six. She was born in Los Angeles. And uh, she she transitioned on the second uh, of December, nineteen sixty two, in Washington D.C. during a peace protest uh, to ban the to ban the bomb. She was actually fasting, and she passed away in that. But following that, she became an ascended being, and she's appeared to many people from from time to time. And uh, in nineteen sixty three. Uh, she made uh, she made an appearance, and um, this was her this was her statement uh, to a group. This in New um, in New Zealand in Auckland, New Zealand. She says, um, "Is this what you have been waiting for? Wondering, wondering why I, Gloria Lee, a confirmed space gal, did not get 
right on with explaining something about flying saucers and space people. The reason for its, its, uh, its tardiness is that the hierarchy considered the prime need for your world at this moment to be that you understand yourselves before trying to probe into the habits and thoughts of intelligences in other worlds. Once man has, or humankind has found itself, a new vista will open up. Um, so um, I have been dedicated to uh, promoting self-education, not saucer education. It is far more important at this time for the average earthly citizen to learn self-control, emotional stability, unselfish love, and play his or her part in the daily life of their world as a citizen of the universe, than to neglect these things in pursuit of what others outside your atmosphere are, are doing. So it's um, the most important thing that earth people can do right now is to raise the level of spiritual uh, maturity and, and self-control. Um, as we can't even on this world that oftentimes get along with our next door neighbor, how are we going to get along with our, with our brothers and sisters of other planets in the solar system when we're still um, experimenting with biological weapons, um, we're harming our, our brothers and sisters, we're developing uh, more uh, far-reaching rockets and arming them with the nuclear weapons, demilitarizing outer space, uh, and, and so forth. So the, these, are, these are really issues of grave concern to the Venusians and, and other extraterrestrials at this time. Right, right. Um, well, so, so your book now is, is, is available on, online? Uh, yes, Alfred, it is available um, online, all four of them now. We're just waiting on the fifth one, uh, which should be out in about a week or two. So, so lady, so uh, lady Columbus book and your book are coming out at the same time. Uh, yes, yes. Uh, uh, <laughs> well, I uh, heard. Well, the the vast Venus conspiracy is my book, and then yes. um, L lady Columbus book. I helped you to, to edit it. Right, and her and and her book again is called. Uh, her her book is called uh, Lady Columba Venus Revelations. Lady Columba Venus Revelation. Now, is she, where where is she based now? Okay, Lady Columba is it is on is on uh, the planet Venus at the present time. Right now, I look forward when the book is published, let's say it's out in a week or two, and so we'll order it, and then we'll have a special book interview. Okay. I know, but, and we're gonna get a copy of Lady Columba's Venus Revelation, but how are we gonna get a book interview with Lady Columba? Okay, um, well, hopefully, uh, we never know where she might appear. Um, I see. Or, if she might even appear personally to, to you. Um, <laughs> from time to time, Venusians have been known to, to show up, uh, sometimes incognito and, and sometimes uh, uh, clearly identifying themselves at various uh, flying saucer conventions. Yeah. Well, are there any Venusians who, if Lady Columba doesn't show up, who would be willing to be interviewed about Lady Columba's book. I mean, just so that it's not an earth human who's talking about it, but it's a Venusian human who's talking about it. Is that a possibility? Oh, yes, yes, that's a, that's a possibility. I can try to uh, um, see it, what I can do. <laughs> okay, well, uh, keep, us, keep, keep us monitoring 
And could you uh, send me an email or something when your book is up and when Lady Columba's book is up so I can make sure that very day to go and buy both so I can start reading them so we can get these two historic book interviews in, you know, in progress, get them scheduled and etc. Because I think having a book interview with a Venusian about Lady Columba's book, I mean, if it could be Lady Columba, that would be far out. But. <laughs> well, that would be fantastic. Uh, I, you'll also see in the book, there's photos of, uh, of Lady Columba going back to the 1920s. Oh my God. He, see her as a regenerated uh, as a regenerated celestial being looking right. exactly the same. Yeah, yeah. Now, uh, today is Monday, August 10th. And uh, uh, hopefully Robert will be able to join us. If we're, do you, do you still want to continue with this series or? Oh, yes, yes, that's oh, fine. That's fine. Yeah, oh, okay. So uh, what we'll do is we could tentatively schedule it. I know that we're beginning to approach uh, the, the um, time for the Meet the Venusians conference will be the last week of August. And uh, the next week uh, is start Monday, August uh, 17th. So do you think that that's too close to to the, to the conference, or do you think do you all do you all still want to schedule, mm. or or should we wait to to do that? Yeah, let's wait until uh, let's wait until um, after the uh, after the conferences. Uh, there's lots of organizing activities that. Oh, okay, so what we'll do is we'll wait till after the conference, and then perhaps continue this series enriched by the experience of the conference and continue a visit to Venus. Um, I was uh, speaking yesterday with uh, a colleague who's been, who's a visitor on one of the sister planets, Mars, uh, who's a Mars explorer, officially a Mars explorer, U.S. chrononaut and Mars explorer, Andrew D. Bashago. And I was telling him about our visit to Venus series uh, because we triangulate now. We've got Earth humans, Venus humans, and Mars humans. And he asked for the links to the entire series of the visit to Venus. It's very interesting. So I sent him the links to all of the programmings that we were doing, because from an exopolitical standpoint, uh, if and when we can get a peace conference going between Earth humans, Mars humans, and Venus humans, that would be very, very awesome, astounding, and fruitful. That would be awesome, and uh, I, I had the opportunity to uh, uh, to meet Andrew at the uh, Albuquerque, New Mexico um, UFO conference, uh, Stargate Stargate conference okay. back in uh, 2018, but uh, unfortunately he wasn't able to to make it to that one. But we were both going to be on a, a panel. The subject time. Okay. Yeah, yeah. So uh, perhaps in the after the the uh, um, after the Venus conference uh, at the end of August, and once we resume the 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 visit to Venus series, Andrew will be speaking as well at a conference on his, his Mars visitations, and he has a new book coming out on his Mars visitations and on all of the activity on Mars. 
Mars bases and all of that, we can have a joint Mars Venus panel and an exchange of notes. Because I think that bringing together the three outstanding human planets of Venus, Mars, and Earth stabilizes hu the human contingent in the solar system like you stabilize a stool, you know? Yes, yes. And, and, uh, Interplan uh, Interplanets Conference. Yeah, yeah. So would you be up for that? Oh, yes. I'm, f I'm up for that. Yeah, we can do it virtually now. We have all of these uh, uh, technologies that, that we can use, uh, you know, for it to have a virtual conference. So uh, after our Venus conference, the last week of, of uh, August, and I'll, we'll put in the video description links so that people who are watching this now can attend and there's a special discount that we have there. And there's also some scholarships uh, for, this, for this Venus conference. And so I really wanna thank you, Raymond, for, for uh, helping create this, this series and for all of the pioneering work that you've done uh, in your lifetime, because you really started as a teenager uh, uh, back where most of us were just unconscious and playing ping pong. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Alfred. It's always a pleasure to be on your program and uh, and reach out to uh, reach out to the ExoPolitics audience. Uh, I always appreciate the fine comments that are posted there on on YouTube and other sites, and look look forward to doing future programs uh, with you. Excellent. Okay. Well. Thank you very much, and we'll see you at the conference and after the conference. Yes. Anything. Okay. <laughs> Good night.